East versus West 15 is the craziest card yet. And uh, I'm going to run through my predictions here real quick. Uh, I'll spend a little bit of time on each one because I don't want to make multiple videos. Irina Gladkaya versus Brigitte Ivanfi. I don't know too much about Brigitte, but I do believe that Irina has had more higher level success, especially in recent years. And so, you know, this could be a great match, um, but I think I have to favor Irina. Not a strong favor. Don't know too much about Brigitte. Um, Azat Strapian versus Daniel Ustinov. Now, uh, this was a match uh, that Ustinov, I thought it was Ustinov replaced Hunter Knopfs for the 70 kilo title match, but but maybe it was backwards. Maybe Azat replaced Hunter Knopfs uh, against Ustinov. One way or another, Hunter Knopfs got hurt. He was in this match, and uh, these are the two guys pulling now. Um, Ustinov is one of the most impressive pullers that I've ever seen down at that lightweight. I mean, he, he just looks like a freak. And, um, you know, he's the 75 kilo WAF champion right now. And uh, you have to assume that if he can make the same weight as uh, Azad, which is, who's the uh, the 70 kilo WAF champion, uh, the, the naturally bigger guy probably has to be the favorite. So I'm going to go with Ustinov on this one because everything I've seen from him impresses the hell out of me. Okay. Nugo Chikadze versus Oguzan Kochak. All right. A lot of people who are newer to arm wrestling don't know Kochak. They see Nugo, uh, you know, winning Europeans, beating Krasimir, busting his hand open with his top roll. And they don't know that Kochak was this lightning flash, side pressure based, uh, mostly, mostly trying to hook, but just ridiculous speed off the go. Um, Kochak has had more success at a higher level than Nugo. Nugo is a recent European champion, but he's not a world champion and Kochak's a world champion. So if you go based on that, and if Kochak's in his best form, he's got really great odds of being able to turn Nugo. Uh, that said, I'm not sure that he, I'm not sure that the top end power is necessarily because Nugo's not slow. I'm not sure that the top end power is there to just put Nugo away. I mean, Nugo was able to hang there and even uh, get a win on Petro Marhar and, and uh, you can do that. You're a bad, bad dude, uh, even though he's primarily a top roller. So I'm going to call this is a 50 50 match um, due to activity uh, and, and, you know, just recently pulling at a high level. I'm going to give the actual slight edge to Nugo. So I think Nugo's going to win this one. But Kochak's very dangerous, guys. Don't don't underestimate Kochak. He, he's a great, great, magnificent arm wrestler. Um, next, next, Arthur Makarov versus Ulmer Kozakoglu. Eh, hope I did that right. Um, so. Makarov is uh, a weirdo. You see the way he's built. He's like Oleg on, on both arms. And this uh, Umer guy also, <laughs> uh, I don't know how the hell this guy makes 80 kilos in the laugh. Um, he's got like the biggest the biggest forearm I've ever seen or something close to it. You know, he's also like an Oleg joke on the right arm. Um, and, I, you know, Makarov is, is wonderful. I mean, I've seen him pull many great matches. Uh, but looking at looking at this Omer guy, um, it's it's hard to imagine him taking a loss at all to somebody at that weight. Um, so even though I, I haven't done an analysis on common opponents, um, my gut feel is that this guy this guy's gonna come in and just slap him. I, I don't know. Um, so I, I'm gonna slightly favor Omer on this one. Uh, it's very possible that Archer is able to get to his position and just uh, beat the guy with experience because I believe that Omer is actually quite young. Makarov is, uh, and also young, but but a little bit older and more experienced uh, in laugh and stuff. So, H hard match to call, but I'm going to go with this Omer guy. Um, Dimitrina Petrova versus Carolina Peterson. Um, Carolina is a wonderful, wonderful lady, and she's a great endurance puller. Um, Dimitrina has beaten her at WAF, um, and Dimitrina is the favorite in this match, okay? So... Uh, just based on history, uh, Dimitrina has had too much power and has been able to get through Carolina. And I, I, I would say that if the match stops, I mean, if she can drag it out long enough, Carolina would get the match to tilt more in her favor. But Dimitrina has the ability to hang in there and grind it out. Um, and I mean, she showed that against uh, Ayana, and I think. Yeah, I, th I think Dimitrina has to be the favorite. I mean, I, I, I want Carolina to win, but I think Dimitrina has got to be the favorite in this match. Okay, Oleg Jok versus Bekili Onyani. They pulled early in the East versus West. I think it was East versus West 2. And Onyani surprised everybody getting a win on Oleg, although Oleg eventually beat him. Um, Bekili's bigger. This is the 95 kilo title, and he's a terrifying arm wrestler. He, he made 
Tynov look bad, the, the previous 95 kilo world title holder. He made Arkham Tynov look terrible. Um, he, he, he let him get his position, reversed from having a, a, a lost wrist to out top rolling Tynov. It's just scary what this guy can do. Um, I think his level has gone very, very far up. Um, and Oleg Zhuk is not the same guy that he was before his accident. Okay. So looking at this, uh, I think that Keeley's, I think that Keeley's going to run over him. Um, anything's possible. Oleg is still Oleg. I just don't think he's the Oleg that can, that can stand that kind of fire. And that Keeley, uh, that Keeley is terrifying for any version of Oleg. Um, I think this one's going to be a, a, an absolute sweep for Onyani. Uh, next one, Todd Hutchings and Yoshi Kanai. Um, if Yoshi was able to come in at a lot heavier weight, uh, then this would be a very hard match for Todd. I, I still would have Todd winning probably um, in, in this day and age, but uh, Kanai is going to have to make 105, which is a bit small for him. And Hutchings is right at the very top of that category. Um, one of Some of the problems that people had with pinning Kanai... Uh, you would see more with guys with longer arms like Ron Bath. Um, he, he's very, very sticky, very difficult, has amazing endurance. Uh, and right above that pad, he's able to create a stop. But he doesn't, in my, uh, in my estimation for the matches that I know of Yoshi, some of which are some of the greatest matches in history, like him versus Ron Bath, I don't believe that Kanai has the tools that are required to beat Todd, which means he doesn't have the hand dominance and the ability to turn Todd over and drag him away. If it gets into an endurance battle of who can do sideways harder, especially with Todd's short forearm, I mean, that match is going to get dragged over to his side of the table just by just by nature of how their forearms line up. I think that the match is going to end up going to Todd, and Todd also is much more recently active. He was just the world champion not so long ago at this weight. Um, and this is Kanai's first match back. So, yeah, I'm going for Todd Hutchings on this one, and I think he sweeps. Okay, Reno Masic versus Ibrahim Saigov. This is the 115 kilo right hand title match. And this is a crazy match because you got two deep inside pullers, and and uh, they're both young. Uh, I mean, Saigov's a young man. I think he's mid 20s. Or, or is, he, is he 30 already? I don't know. Anyway, um, but Reno, Reno's just a boy. He's. 20, I think he just turned 20, okay? Um, Reno, current WAF world champion, both arms, 110 kilo. And Sagov, AMC champion. Sagov beat Sandris uh, at 105 kilos, and it was a hard match for him, okay? Uh, he did get the win, but Sandris had, Sandris had odds there in the, uh, uh, in, in the inside game. And frankly, if he hadn't hurt his shoulder, he might have been able to win. Sandris came into that match with uh, a hurt shoulder. And I predicted because of the hurt shoulder, he wouldn't be able to quite dig him out of the hook, which is exactly what happened. Um, Reno um, beat Sandris more comfortably, in my opinion, uh, in the WAF at 110 kilos uh, this year. And, you know, it, it's a clash of styles. Who can get the shoulder in? Uh, Reno is more versatile and I think just uh, is just a superstar. Um, <laughs> Saigov is a brute and... Um, I, I believe that Reno will get the win on this one. I think he'll be able to out adjust and be able to avoid, if not just bear the brunt of the shoulder from Saigon, he'll be able to avoid it and win with his own shoulder in the long run. Um, it's possible that this heavier weight class brings Saigon significantly more power, um, but I, I don't think it's going to be that different. And I think that Reno not having to cut, because I think he's weighing, he's walking around at 120 kilos right now. I think he's going to be stronger than we've ever seen. So I'm going with Reno on this one. Uh, Samusha versus Vladimir Mayorov. Vladimir Mayorov is an enigma of arm wrestling. That's like the, the, <laughs> the least powerful looking arm wrestler out there. And yet he took a round off of Samusha with two months of training and Samusha was in full swing of his... Uh, his, I think this is his 10th title defense, something like that. It's insane. Maybe it's his ninth. I can't remember. Um, one of which, you know, was him beating Mayorov. I expect Mayorov to be much stronger. And yet, I don't believe that he will beat Samusha. Mayorov has a great style to beat Samusha. Um, I mean, he, he has the ability to dynamically transition and get extremely deep. And, uh, you know, just use his shoulder and the hook. 
I just think that he's going to have extreme difficulty pinning Samusha multiple times. All right, A lot of people have pinned Samusha. Nobody's gone through him enough. And I don't believe that the outside dominance exists in Mayorov's arsenal to expose him as much as um, Nurdalet did. And yet while maintaining any ability to use the shoulder. I, I don't think that he's going to be able to do that. I think he's just going to be forced to try to drag him out, transition in and out. And I think Samusha, I mean, once he gets externally rotated, he's got so much stopping power that I think it would take an act of God for him to lose four rounds in a row. Or four rounds, period, not four in a row. It doesn't have to be in a row. So, yep, I'm going to go with Samusha on this one. He's going to continue the reign. Um, one of the absolute greatest of all time in that, you know, that Walter Wade category. All right. Next one, or is that middleweight? It's 209, 95 kilo. What's that? Is that middleweight? Anyway, I'm not sure how it's defined because I thought Walter Wade, I thought Walter Wade was 77 and uh, eh, I'm all confused. Anyway, <sighs> Vitaly Lalayton versus Georgi Zoranov. Uh, Zoranov is another caveman from, you know, prehistoric times and Vitaly's a giant from the future. It's like, um, they faced each other and Zoranov, I believe, has been dominant in their facings in the 100 and 110 kilo weight class. Um, Vitaly's much, much bigger now, so is Zoranov, but he's not as far bigger as Vitaly is. Uh, he's coming in probably, I don't know what, the, I don't know if they've weighed in yet or, or what they weigh, but I think Vitaly's around 145 kilos, and I think that Zorano's more like 135 kilos. Anyway, most people say that Vitaly is very uncomfortable to grip up with and is basically impossible to hook. Zoranov claims that he's very comfortable, he likes to set up with Vitaly where people struggle he likes it the guy's got unbelievable hooking ability he turned revaz in and revaz gave a lot of trouble to vitaly their first round okay uh Zorano was able to turn him in and, and bulldoze him um he didn't hurt him like vitaly did so vitaly ended up dispatching him in a similar fashion but anyway this, this could this is a great uh absolutely great clash of styles although Zorano has the ability to pull outside as well and might might be forced to in the early rounds Zoranov has amazing endurance for a super heavyweight. Vitaly only has some positions where he's able to be amazing. And uh, I don't know, like, part of me thinks that Vitaly cannot be hooked. He can't be beaten that way. But part of me thinks that Zoranov is it's his time. And uh, I, I'm, all, I'm going against my gut here. I talked myself into believing Zoranov's going to win this one. So I'm going to predict Zoranov. Uh, truth is, Vitaly might just disengage him and, and, and run him over like he did with Artyom, but uh, I'm going to go with Zoranov on this one. Who knows? That's, this is what the fun's all about, right? Okay, directly Zerikashvili versus Georgi Tautiev. Uh, Tautiev is a very technical arm wrestler. He's very tall. I don't think he'll be comfortable for Irakli, okay? Uh, total strength level has to go to Irakli here. I mean, Tautiev uh, is an AMC champion in 95. Irakli somehow manages to be gigantic at this weight while also being a tall guy who's shredded. Um, I believe the match is going to move towards Irakli. There is going to be potential for him, while he attempts to pin, to lose his wrist. We saw this with Angarbaev, and while I'm sure that Irakli is stronger now than when he pulled Angarbaev, uh, Tatiev will punish him if he screws up, if he holds on too much, if he doesn't position himself and technically arm wrestle. He doesn't have to out-arm wrestle Tatiev because I believe he is stronger, but he has to not make any mistakes. He has to just find his position and improve his position while being more efficient than Tautiev to win. I believe Tautiev has better endurance. Um, I believe that Heraklis' top strength is just better, and he has the potential to be more efficient if he uses that strength technically. Um, so uh, I'd love to see this match. I'm going to go with Heraklis. He's, he's the champion. He's the favorite. And if he plays his card right, he, cards right, he should win the match. But uh, Tautiev, Tautiev has the potential to to stun him, taking his wrist, dragging the match away from him. And then when Heraklis all blown up, uh, even take over the match by the end. But I, I think Heraklis is probably going to walk away with this one as well. Uh, Michael Todd and Gennady Kvikvina, <laughs> a rematch from... I think also East versus West too. Um, I saw Michael at East versus West 14, and I couldn't believe, like, because I've seen Michael before. 
I could not believe how this guy looked. He looked like an absolute mountain. And he's even bigger and stronger today. The guy, just visually, it was so impressive. He is on a mission. This guy's on, this guy is doing something different. Because he he's chasing it. I, maybe this is his last go around for the Super Heavyweight World title. But he's on a mission and he's he's pulling for a higher reason. And uh, Gennady's coming off of that bicep injury. Okay, now Michael didn't look his best when he pulled Frank. Who is underrated and has an unbelievable hand. Um, and then Michael, you know... That was at a weight class, of course. I was at 115, and I believe that Michael's probably 300 pounds right now. And Michael against Camille is just a clash of styles. I mean, Camille's got a press. Michael's an outside puller, and it ended up here, as you would expect. And Michael uh, didn't seem in trouble for even a moment. He he uh, he beat one of the strongest pressers in the world. Um, Gennady, I do not believe his press is as strong as Camille's. I believe it's more explosive. He can hit it from other positions and he has more versatility. So I think his press is more useful. But I think if you put him pressing on Michael versus Camille pressing on Michael, uh, Camille's press is going to be stronger. Now what will happen is Gennady's going to climb. He's going to be explosive. He's going to be hitting into this dead space. And this dead space is a big problem for Michael. When they pulled the last time, and Michael was big, but he did, he wasn't anywhere near as strong as he is now. Michael just sat there and let Gennady hit him until he until he stretched his arm out, basically. And he didn't have the holding power for rounds two or three. He was just letting Gennady run all over him. Instead of advancing position when he had the match stopped, which is what he should have done, he should have immediately been climbing. He should have been kicking. He should have been moving his elbow. He should have been gaining the hand advantage because he was able to stop the match. Uh, he just let Gennady punch him in the mouth until his chin weakened and then... Then it was over. So I believe that Michael has learned, and I believe he's in a freaky, freaky state. And Gennady admits that he's not at his best. So I, the match was close back then. Uh, I know that Gennady got better when he pulled uh, Devin, but uh, I'm going to go on Michael Todd on this one. Um, he's going to have difficulty uh, finishing Gennady. That's that's the hardest thing. Uh, so so the, the possibility for Gennady's... Uh, victory doesn't just lie in his offense, but the fact that um, stopping the transition is... It, I'm not sure that Michael's going to be able to transition on Gennady, okay? I, I believe he will because I'm predicting that he'll win, but that's the vulnerability. Is Michael's going to have to come up and use a shoulder at some point, and Gennady might just be able to keep him out of it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 50-50 match, I'm going to go with Michael on this one just by, just by a hair. Um, it's going to be one of the hardest matches on this card, guys. It's going to be crazy. All right, uh, Ivan Machyshenko versus Alijan Muratov. Oh, my God. 115 left. I love these left-handed matches, and this is the probably the best hook match that you can ask for. Machyshenko looks amazing. Alijan is a weirdo, um, and he's big, okay? He's having to cut weight to make 115. Uh, he won WAF Worlds weighing under 100 kilos twice. <laughs> he would he he drank a bunch of water to bump over 100 kilos because you're only allowed to compete up one weight category in WAF, and so he had to be in the 110 category by weighing over 100 in order to compete in the supers, and he beat everybody. Now that was with some difficulty. The second year he ran over everybody, uh, but he still had trouble. He still had trouble. Uh, I think guys like Gabchenko held him up a bit. His countrymen, um, Machichenko is extremely explosive. Alijan is not as explosive as Machyshenko. When he was a light, you know, I think he was 80 kilo puller back in the day, he would have been fast like Machyshenko, but he's not that guy anymore. Um, he's much stronger. Uh, Machyshenko is very explosive, and he has the ability to use the shoulder and the ability to control the pronator, which is exactly what you have to do. You have to be able to get all that pressure on the radius below the hand to prevent Alijan from doing his surges. We've seen this before, like I mentioned, Gapchenko during... Laugh. Um, he he was able to to disengage Alejan a bit, and Alejan just stayed in it, stayed in it, and eventually down here was able to out rotate Kupchenko. But being able to cut off that pronator with the shoulder and the wrist is super important. Um, Ivan was able to do that against Morozov as well. He eventually wore out, and uh, Morozov took over the match. But he was the stronger hook at that time. He had a stronger hook than Morozov. Problem is, I think Alejan does too. So I'm expecting that the match will actually get a side for Matyashenko, 
And then it's going to be how how well is he able to weather that storm of surges to, to get ripped out. I, in the end, I'm giving the edge to Ali Jean on this one. I think that he has just more top-end strength. I think he's got more top-end talent. And I think his ability to pull um, from a palm-up position and regain his pronation as he surges uh, is out of this world. And I think that Machyshenko, while he's extremely crisp and very professional in his lane, um, I think that that once once he gets pulled out of his shoulder by Alijan, he's not going to be able to stand up to the pressure. Uh, so that's that's going to be where it's won and loss. Is, is Machyshenko going to be able to keep his shoulder engaged or not? Okay. Um, now, listen. Alijan can be beaten. Uh, Oleg Jok, in the first round of their match, he was able to make Alijan foul to stay in the match. Now, Alijan's a stronger, bigger guy than he was then. But Machyshenko does have the potential to do that, okay? I don't think this is going to be a clean sweep. But I do think, in the end, Alijan's probably going to pull out the win. All right. And then last, Devin Larrett and Oleg Petrenko. Um, I had a lot of questions about this. I wanted to wait until Devin was close to making weight because he was 273 pounds when he got back from King of the Table. Uh, and he glided down to 105. I don't know how the hell he did that. I mean, he made a video about it, but I don't know how he did that. It's, it's amazing that he was able to get his weight down. And I think that he'll probably hang on to most of his strength. Okay, If you go back and look at how much he was doing on his pronation lift when he pulled Gennady, He's that strong now. Well, he was he was that strong this month during his cut. And he was doing, you know, around 150 pounds. And he thinks that everybody on his team thinks that he's stronger than his lift numbers suggest. Okay. Uh, Devin got a lot stronger by the time he pulled Levon. He, he was pulling in the mid to upper 160s. But he was in that, like, 150, low 150s range when he pulled Gennady. And uh, a little, a, just a little higher than that when he beat Dennis. Okay. Now, Petrenko, from a just pure power standpoint, um, he'll have more center than Dennis and probably more cup than Dennis. Um, he doesn't have as much back pressure or, or rotation as Dennis. Uh, but Petrenko actually has the has odds to get rounds off of Dennis. If they were to face now, he he doesn't there's no necessity that Petrenko would lose by in a sweep. He might even be able to win, but I would say he'd probably lose, but take rounds off of Dennis. He's incredible. And guys, he's his lifts today, other than just in straight back pressure, um, his lifts today are equal or better than, than push cars were when push car was training and uh, at his best. I mean, I think, I think he's a little over 60 kilos on the Mazarenko handle. That's about where push car was. I think push car's record was 63. Um, I actually think that his press is stronger than Pushkar's. I don't think Pushkar ever had a 100 kilo shoulder press. His bench press is the same, whatever, 200 for three reps. He could probably do 210 to 220. Pushkar never got above that. Uh, not that the bench press is that important, but I think I think Oleg is a better arm wrestler. Pushkar was getting there, um, but Petrenko benefited from that. What he lacks is the frame size and the explosiveness of Andre. And he, and he doesn't have quite as much of that just insane rising back pressure because what push car would do is he'd actually grab under your thumb and he'd hammer curl it up which most people don't do but as part of what made push car so intimidating is he had that long arm powerful hand and he'd just grip you tight and and pull you up and that loading up like this allowed him to be very 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 connected when he went sideways which is part of why he had such an amazing hit oleg doesn't really have that but anyway all this to say oleg is incredible this is not going to be an easy match. If Devin was super heavyweight, it still wouldn't be an easy match. I'd still predict him to win, but it still wouldn't be an easy match. I mean, I, I put Petrenko over most super heavyweights, and outside of the top few, we're talking Ermes, Levon, Vitaly, uh, a couple others. Petrenko's got a stronger cup than all of those guys, too. I mean... He he probably would give problems to Morozov, and you guys are gonna call me crazy, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he's that strong. So, I think that Devin, I I think we all know how this is gonna go. It's gonna be some combination of his match with Prudnik. Oleg's not that much like Prudnik, but he does have the he does have the connection to his shoulder and his hand. He just pulls more outside. Um, I think Devin's gonna Devin's gonna struggle with him at first. I think he's probably even gonna get pinned because Pushkar. I mean, goodness me, Petrenko really is 
so incredible. Um, Devin probably doesn't get through this cleanly, but I think that he will bust the wrist. He will be able to out arm wrestle a leg. He'll be able to out position him, and it's going to be ugly. But I think that Devin does win this match. Uh, so that's the main event. That's the 105 kilo title, and I think Devin's going to take it. And then I think he's going to go and he's going to beat anybody he wants in the 115s. And who knows? Super heavyweights after that. So it'll be a great story one way or another. And if Oleg wins, that would be amazing for arm wrestling. Uh, I don't know that Devin Lair will make 105 again if he loses to Petrenko. Because maybe, maybe it just was too much of a loss. But uh, it would still be great for arm wrestling if the young champ wins. I just think that Devin's going to beat him. And I think it's going to be ugly. So... That's it, guys. Um, we don't have a lot of time left before the event, so let me know what you think. Sorry I ran on for nearly 26 minutes, but there were a lot of great matches and a lot of lot to talk about for them. So um, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, I'll see you next time.